Hello and welcome to another Common Core Algebra 1 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we're going to be doing Unit 1, Lesson 11, Algebraic Puzzles. This is the last lesson in Unit 1, but before we get started let me just remind you that the worksheet and a homework for this lesson can be found by clicking on the video's description. As well, don't forget about the great QR code at the top of each worksheet. That'll allow you to take a smartphone or a tablet and get right to this video anytime you need to. All right. Let's begin. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be exploring kind of cool patterns that arise with numbers and seeing if we can't figure out or prove that those patterns always hold by using what we've learned about expressions, variables, equivalent expressions, things like the properties like the associative property and the commutative and distributive properties. So let's play around with these. I love them. Exercise one, choose any number. Create the sum of two more than three times the number with two less than two times the number. What pattern is true of the result? All right, so, whoa, two more than three times the number? Two less than two times the number? What's the pattern? All right, um, it says let's explore the pattern with numbers we know before working with algebraic expressions. Even using numbers, the English is a bit tricky to decipher, so let's do it together using a single number. Let's let the number we choose be 3. And we're going to show the calculation as described in the problem. Wow. 2 more than 3 times the number and 2 less than 2 times the number. So 2 more than 3 times the number. So 3 times the number, right? And then we want 2 more than it. All right. And we want to add, right, the sum, right? of 2 less than 2 times the number. So there's 2 times the number, and then there's 2 less than it. Okay, so let's really try to understand here. Here's the sum, right, that's this thing, of 2 more than 3 times the number with 2 less than 2 times the number. All right, let's evaluate this expression. Um, let's do with some parentheses first here. We've got nine plus two, all right? And then we've got six minus two, and then that's gonna be 11 plus four, and that gives me 15. All right, so when the original number is three, my final result is 15. Okay, great. So, is there a pattern? Well, maybe. Maybe the pattern is that the number will always, the result will always be, I don't know, 12 more than the original number, right? 3 plus 12 is 15. I don't know. So, let's try a few numbers and see what happens. Let's, um, let's go for the number, I don't know, 4. Let's try that. So, the same calculation, right? We're going to do 2 more than 3 times the number. and two less than two times the number. All right, well, let's see what we have. Three times four is 12, plus two. Two times four is eight, minus two. 12 plus two is 14, plus six gives me a result of 20. Hmm. All right, so if we start with four, we end up with 20. When we started with 3, we ended up with 15. Let's just be systematic about it. Let's go with some nice integers. Let's see what happens. All right, so 2 more than 3 times a number. And 2 less than 2 times the number. All right, let's see. We've got 3 times 5, which is 15, plus 2, plus 10 minus 2, and that'll be 17 plus 8, and that's 25. So if we start with 5, we end with 25. Start with 4, we end with 20. Maybe we'll just do one more, because we've already got the 3 there. I know we got another row, but let's kind of move it along. So here's going to be 2 more than 3 times the number. And here's going to be 2 less than 2 times the number. So 3 times 6 is 18, 
plus 2, and 12 minus 2, what will that be? That'll be 20, plus 10, gives me 30. So, hey, let me, let me, let me put this, the 3 in and the 15. So when we started with 4, we got 20. When we started with 5, we got 25. When we started with 6, we got 30. And when we started with 3, we got 15. So what's the pattern? Pause the video for a second if you don't know what the pattern is immediately and think about it. So what's the pattern? It looks like the result is always equal five times the original. Five times the original. All right. It seems like that's the case. Now the question is, can we use properties of equality, properties of equivalency, to actually prove that that will always happen. All right, I'm gonna clear out the text, so pause the video now if you need to. All right, here it goes. All right, so now let's prove that the result that you see in the table will always be true. Let the number now be called x, write an expression that translates the verbal description given in the problem for our calculation. All right, so let, let's do it. Um, two more than three times the number. Well, if the number is x, then two more than three times the number will be 3x plus 2. But we want to create the sum of that with a number that is two less than two times the number. All right. Now, we can use the associative property of addition to say that those parentheses don't really matter. They don't. We don't have to add the 3x and the 2 first and the 2x and the negative 2 second. Then, of course, we can use the commutative property of addition to flip-flop that 2 plus 2x into a 2x plus 2. And then now you can probably see it. 3x plus 2x is 5x. 2 minus 2 is a big fat 0. So we get 5x. So if we start with x, the result is always 5 times x. Kind of neat. Kind of neat, right? So that's how we can prove a general result by starting with just a variable instead of a specific number. So we're going to keep playing with these algebraic puzzles today and see where we can go with them. All right. Pause the video now if you need to. Write down whatever you have to, and then let's move on. Here we go. All right, let's take a look at a fluency problem. Okay, so here's a nice multiple choice example of this. If n represents a number, which of the following expressions represents the sum of one more than twice the number and three less than five times the number? Pause the video now, take a moment and think about this and see if you can translate all of this into a simple binomial expression. Pause the video now. All right, let's go through it. Okay, we're summing, so we're adding. What are we adding? One more than twice the number. One more than twice the number with three less than five times the number. Three less than five times the number. Again, just like before, we can now use the associative property of addition to say, well, those parentheses don't really matter. We can just remove them. We can then use the commutative property of addition to flip-flop 1 plus 5n and make it 5n plus 1. And now we can combine like terms to make 2n plus 5n into 7n and 1 minus 3 into negative 2, giving me a final result of 7n minus 2 for choice 1. Kind of cool. All right. So this is a really nice combination of what we did in the last lesson where we were translating English into algebraic expressions. Now 
we're doing it sort of for more of a purpose, if you will. All right? So pause the video if you need to, because I'm going to scrub out the text, okay? All right, here we go. All clear. All right, let's move on to the next page. Okay, so let's go with a, with a more complicated problem. This is a, kind of a short lesson because the problems are pretty, pretty rigorous. In this problem, we will explore a calculation of the difference. Ooh, subtraction. Subtraction, always worse than addition. The difference between the product of a number and a number five larger than it and the product of a number and a number five less than it. Will this re reveal a pattern like the last one? Like before, let's explore the pattern with numbers we know before working with algebraic expressions. Okay, fair enough. Let the number we choose be 10. So let's, let's do this very complicated calculation. We're going to do a difference. There's going to be some subtraction. Okay, but what is it a subtraction of? It's a subtraction of two products. The first product is the product of a number and a number 5 larger than it. So 10 and a number 5 larger than it minus the number, the product of a number, and a number 5 less than it, right? So here's my number, 10. Here's a number that's 5 more than it. Here's a number that's 5 less than it. Now this isn't so bad. 10 times 15 is 150. 10 times 5 is 50. So when we find that difference, we get 100. So if I start with the number 10, I end up with the number 100. Now that's not enough to establish any kind of pattern. For all I know, maybe the answer is, well, I do, I square the number. You know, 10 times 10 is 100. So let's play around with some other numbers. Let's just pick some at random. Let's, let, let's, let's, try, let's try something like 6. Okay. Now what was, the, what was the calculation? I have to find the product of the number with a number that's 5 larger than it. So 5 larger than 6 would be 11. And I have to find the difference, and then 6 times a number 5 less than it. Well, 6 times 6 minus 5 would be 1, right? So what do I get? I get 66 minus 6, which gives me 60. All right. Maybe in the next calculation, I'll really write that out so that we really have it. Right? Let, let, let's go with the number, I don't know, let's go with the number 8. All right, so remember, I'm doing 8, and then I'm going to do 8 plus 5, and then 8 times 8 minus 5. I just really want you to understand where these numbers are coming from. So what will I have? I'll have 8 times 13 minus 8 times 3. Ooh, I'm going to run out of space here. 8 times 13 is 104. I mean, you might have to think about it a little bit. And then 8 times 3 is 24. 104 minus 24 is 80. And I'm starting to think I see a pattern here. When I started with 10, I ended up with 100. When I started with 6, I ended up with 60. When I started with 8, I ended up with 80. Let's do one more of them. Um, let's involve some negatives, just for kicks and grins. Let's start with 2. So you'll see why negatives are involved. Here I've got 2 times a number 5 more than 2, minus 2 times a number 5 less than 2. So that's going to be 2 times 7, minus 2 times negative 3. Now watch out here, that's going to be 14 minus negative 6. So that's going to be 14 plus 6, which is 20. Oh, I hope you see that pattern, right? It appears like the result will always be 10 times what we started with. So the result is 10 times the number. Boy, that is some convincing evidence, right? But it's not a proof. It doesn't really justify it. It's building up evidence, all right? 
but it doesn't justify that we will always get 10 times what we start with. So now let's prove that. Okay, so I'm going to clear out the text, pause the video if you need to, and it's gone. Now, we want to be very careful as we try to prove this, okay? But we can do it. We can do it, right? So what are we doing? We're taking a number x and we're multiplying it by a number 5 larger than it. And then we're finding the difference of that with the product of x times x minus 5. All right, be very, very careful. Let's do some distribution. All right, x times x is x squared. x times 5 is positive 5x. Now here, I'm going to think of this as a negative x times a positive x. So that's going to be negative x squared. And then a negative times a negative is a positive 5x. All right, we're going to use the commutative property of addition to actually kind of swing this around as negative x squared plus 5x oops where's that there we go plus 5x plus 5x so again I just looked at this as 5x plus negative x squared that allowed me to flip-flop using the commutative property but now x squared plus negative x squared, and that's a big fat zero. 5x and 5x is 10x, so our result is 10x. And that's right, right? We saw, based on the table, that we were going to get a result that was 10 times what we started with, and there it is. It's kind of cool, right? All right, so algebraic puzzles why things or calculations work out the way they work out. Pause the video now because I'm going to clear out the text. Here it goes. And let's finish up. All right. So today what we did was we really used the skills that we've built up pretty much throughout this unit. Skills including things like distribution, associative and commutative properties, translating English into algebraic expressions, combining like terms, all of that came to bear in this one lesson. So it was good practice. Make sure to really work hard on that homework and that'll give you even further practice and further reinforcement. Every time you do a manipulation, try your best to think about what property or what justifies the manipulation. The more you do that, the better you'll get and the more fluent you'll be with all of these, these skills, ideas, and topics. All right. Thank you for joining me for another Common Core Algebra 1 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler. And until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems. <laughs>